And that's just one, it's just life giving, being able to be. And I'm not talking about fit as far as being pencil thing. I'm talking about fitness as far as being um, as being healthy. Okay. So one of the things that kind of gave me, like I said, a different perspective, and I said this a little bit earlier, was bodybuilding. And what bodybuilding did and why this fits into this fitness portion is because there's a portion of bodybuilding called the masters. And the masters is specifically for people, and correct me if I'm wrong, for people who are 50 and up, 50 and up. And these people get it. Changed my whole life and my mindset about what I thought about fitness. These people perform and they look better than a lot of 20, 30 year olds that I know. Okay. Because they know the right combination of foods and they understand that they have different needs. They can't do the same workouts as this 20 year old who's also in the bodybuilding. The average is about 30 to 40 for bodybuilding. But they can't do the same workouts, but they get it done. It's possible. I've seen it. You just have to want to do it. You have to want to get fit. It's not like, it's not about metabolism. The metabolism I used to, you have to want it. You have to find out the right combination for you. So, oh, and you can go to the next one. This is Ernestine Shepherd. Have you all heard about her? Yeah. She just broke a world record. She is awesome. And this is how, exactly how I want to be at her age. She's like 74. And she looks good. She just started working out at the age of 50. She hadn't been doing this all her life. She's awesome. It's possible. And she eats healthy and she works out often. Simple as that. She doesn't use any type of exenadrin or any of the other stuff that's out there. She knows what she's found the thing that works for her. I can imagine that she's if she wanted to, she could probably have good sex too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so again, I thought we were here to talk about sex. We keep talking about this fitness, and we're here to talk about sex. Okay, here's where it comes, where the sex comes in. How many times have people have been having sex and they got a Charlie horse? <laughs> <laughs> How many times have people had sex and they start and they pull the muscle? <laughs> what about general aches and pains the next day? Oh my God, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> certain positions because I don't have the flexibility that I used to have. You know, okay, my leg doesn't go that way like it used to when I was younger. So I'm gonna lay off that move. Okay. And then what about the people who can't even get through the sex act because it's so exhausting. And the, the, the sweat, you know what I mean? And it may not be you, but this happens to people. I can't get, oh my God, I, I'm just exhausting. I'm, I'm spending so much energy that this is, I can't even get through this whole thing. I need to stop and breathe. <laughs> this happens to people. And you tell me that this does not have anything to do with So, when you start having issues like that, you have sex less frequently, because who wants to deal with that? You have sex less frequently, and sex, it doesn't encourage novelty. And um, and novelty is what makes sex exciting and fresh and new, and makes you want to keep coming back to it. And if there's no novelty, then you don't want to have sex as frequently. So it's a cycle. Okay. So what can you do about this? And what before we go forward. The problems that I'm, or the um, the problem solvers rather, that I'm about to give, I do recommend is both for singles, of course, and for couples as well. Um, and especially with couples, um, it's nice because you get to push each other through, and also um, it just encourage you just encourage one another in that way. And not to mention, some of the moves can be sexy. You're stretching, you're hamstring stretch. You know, you're working out and you're kind of doing this whole thing and you're reconnecting with your partner. So. Stretch often. Stretch often. Stretch often. <laughs> stretch often. <laughs> Guys who go for adults and go play pickup games. Stretch. The difference between you playing that pickup game at the age of 30, the football, flag football, 
or the basketball. They can just get out there and just go ahead and play. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, oh, I didn't pop something, I ruptured something. I, we've seen this, adults, because they're, they, okay, I was an athlete. Still an athlete, I can do it. But the thing is, when you were actually an athlete, what did you do? You were stretching. They made sure they put you through the workout and you stretched before a game. You forget about that. You can't just go. Especially if you haven't used these muscles in a while like that, and all of a sudden you think you're going to just take off. You can't just use muscles like that. Okay? You have to stretch. And even with sex, sex burns some, and I don't have the statistic here how many calories it burns. But the thing is, you're working out also and having sex, you're using every single muscle in your body almost to have sex in some cases. So sometimes it may behoove you to even, to even, to even, um, to even stretch before sex. <laughs> or after sex so you won't have those aches and pains. Okay? So stretch often. Lift weights. So important to lift weights. Um, you need weight-bearing activity in order for your bones to grow and for your bones to be strong. Okay, that's how bones grow. It's kind of like you need to lose, use it or you lose it. And they're the discs that are in your spine, your back, they regenerate themselves based off of weight-bearing activity. So if they're being used, your body's going to say, okay, we're being used, I'll go ahead and give more. And this is why you see sometimes, in some cases, um, when it's not another medical issue, some people getting osteoporosis because they don't use those things. They don't, they don't do certain things. And so you just kind of walking around and moving around is helpful, of course. But lifting weights acts at, gives you an extra benefit of being kind of strong and, um, and an additional uh, weight bearing for, the, uh, for whatever body part that you're using there. Um, but so the third one is work out three to five days a week. And I think that's not unreasonable. Um, I see a lot of people when I go running sometimes, I see a lot of people walk around the track and they're just two people, you know, and it's good, they're great, it's, you know, um, two women out on lunch and they're just walking and they're having talking and they're laughing and they're having a good time, but nobody's working. If you are on walking around at the same pace as you would around your house or at your job, then you're not working hard enough. And that metabolism, metabolism thing is not going to be something that's working for you. Because you're not breaking anything down. You have to challenge your body. The body wants, the body needs to be stressed to a certain extent. That's what, it, that's what happens when you get your heart rate up. That's called stress. Um, the body needs to be stressed in order for it to adapt and get to that next level of fitness. So you need to get your heart rate up. And obviously you need, you need to eat lean foods and never think that you've arrived. Even if you're in the best shape ever, it's a constant, it's a lifestyle, it's a lifestyle change. You're always going to have to do it. And you're always going to, and I know it sounds like, oh God, I always have to do it. But you'll feel better and you'll be able to perform better. And not only sexually, but in other aspects of your life as well. So, again, after we've gone through all these things, we'll talk about how fitness can affect your sexuality and how being fit can actually impact and help sexuality, we're left with the message once again that sex is sexism. That was for women. No, that was, the second one was better than that one. Okay. Um, but yeah, it is. Sex is good. And it gets better when you're more physically fit as well. Okay, so we're going to move right into the next section. Everybody still awake? Everybody? Yeah. Everybody with me? Yeah. Okay, I'm not, nobody's going to sleep out there. Okay, a little bit longer. Let's talk about spirituality. This is probably the biggest one. Like, what do you mean when you talk about spirituality? Are you talking about religion? No. Not talking about religion. Spirituality. <coughs> spirituality transcends <laughs> religion. And what I mean by that is that religion, they're different things. Now, can they go together? Course. You can be spiritual in your religion, but they're not the same thing. Okay, so when I'm talking about spirituality, I'm not talking about religion, which is uh, the, the beliefs and the traditions and the actual acts. 
that kind of makes something a religion that are kind of uh, unique within a group of people. Okay, that is kind of religion. But I'm talking about spirituality. Spirituality is more personal. Um, and spirituality is something that is talks about, when we talk about spirituality, I'm talking about more an altered state of consciousness. Um, I'm talking about a person seeking enlightenment in some way. Okay, so various religions are spiritual and they're seeking enlightenment, but I'm talking about just the spirituality piece, okay? And I'm talking to everybody, because everybody, whether you believe, whatever you believe, can be spiritual, okay? And so if sex can add to our being, right? If sex can add to our being, and so does spirituality, because that's a spirituality, that spirituality adds to who you are, it makes you better, okay? It makes you a better person. If sex adds to our being, and so does spirituality, why can't sex be spiritual? Okay, and I'll go into more detail about that in a second. We have to change the way, again, we have to change the way we think about what the purpose of sex is. Again, it's about connection. It's about giving. It's about doing it for, okay, doing it with. We have to change the way we think it's not dirty, it's not gross, it's not disgusting, it's not beat down, it's not low, okay? It's something that's supposed to renew you, okay? It's something that's supposed to fuel you, and that's something that's supposed to cleanse you. We see that, again, because of the biological things, the physical things that happen to us when we have it, right? It's a natural, normal thing. It's supposed to be something that brings us together, a way to communicate with somebody. So, I talk about the power of sex a lot. And if you don't really understand what I mean by sex being powerful, this is the reason why I'm always interested in asking yeah, people who are asking because I'm like, wow, you really understand. You know, I'm not saying one thing or the other, that people should do one thing or the other, but when I meet somebody asking, I'm like, you know what, well, what's your story? You know, um, power with sex. I volunteered for the Clean Rape Crisis Center um, for the hotline, mm -hmm. um, the confidential hotline a couple, a few years, actually I stopped, I it's about three years ago. But I volunteered for them for two years, the confidential hotline, and some of the stuff you hear is absolutely awful. Me and Anna have called in because I've been molested, and I've, or I've been raped, and this happened 20 years ago, and I'm so affected by this, and I need somebody to talk to because I can't go to sleep. Mm -hmm. This is real. What does that say about the power of what happened to them? That single event that happened in their life. You don't see this from people who got shot. You don't see this from people who got stabbed and who got accosted in some other way. Yeah, they may be jumping when they hear loud sounds for a little bit, but they get over it, okay? Not so much when you get raped or when you get molested. That stays with you, the fear and um, of course, people work through it, but they always remember, and it's always something to work through. And that speaks to the power. And that, in that one moment, somebody who was otherwise so confident in themselves and had so much life can be taken away from them in that single moment that that happened, and it affects everything else. How powerful is that? So, if somebody can take away your power, that quick, can you change your mindset and realize that the, that that act does have the power that it does? Can you do that today? <coughs> sex is important. Okay, I said sex is not important, but it's important in the fact that it's powerful. And it's something that's ignited in us when you have sex. Again, we're talking about the physical stuff that happens. Something happens in us when we have sex. It's almost like an energy transfer. This is where we get a little bit more into spirituality. It's a transference of energy. When we get our power taken away, it's almost like there's energy kind of taken away. And I've heard it described that way from people who have gotten 